into uh, Passion Week uh, as we look forward to uh, Good Friday and next Sunday on Easter. Um, you read the Gospels and you read all that Jesus endured, the terror, the agony, the agony, excuse me, the sorrow of the cross. The question comes to my mind is, how did he endure that? How was he able to go through all this recorded in the Gospels? He knew the cup of wrath was coming his way. The Father was about to unleash and pour upon Jesus the, the cup of his wrath and horror for the sins of all of mankind throughout all of history. And Jesus willingly took that cup and drank it himself. Jesus also knew that his heavenly Father was going to forsake him, Matthew 27 and verse 45. And he also knew that his 11 disciples were going to abandon him. They, they were there, oh, we'll never go anywhere, we'll stay till the end. And sure enough, when the hard times came, he was all alone drinking the cup of wrath. So, question again, how did Jesus survive? How was he able to go through the gruesome agony of the cross? If you take your phone or your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 26, would you please? Because we're going to see here in Matthew 26 how Jesus was able to survive and endure the trials, the beatings, the rejection, the sin of all of us heaped upon him. And the short answer of how Jesus survived, ready? Taking notes, here it is. This is how Jesus endured the awful events of this week we celebrate. Ready? He was fully prepared. He was. So what did that preparation involve? If you're able, stand with me. Matthew chapter 26. We're going to start with verse 36. Read down through verse 46. How did he endure? He was fully prepared. Here we go. Verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. Lord, those, those are hard words we just read, we just acknowledge. And yet, Lord, I think there's a lot for us to learn from this section. I, I think you have modeled for us how to endure difficulties and struggles and problems. So, Lord, you've uh, recorded this for our benefit would you help us learn how we can follow your lead here? Jesus, we're amazed that you were able to uh, face and go through 
with power and grace, the most agonizing, the worst pain and suffering that anyone has ever faced in all of history. And I think you have a secret here, Jesus. Would you help us to learn it today? And I want to pray, especially right now, some who are standing right here today in your church, they're right in the middle of struggle. Some are right in the middle of discouragement. Some are in the middle of pain and trouble and even betrayal. Lord, I'm asking that you'll show us how we can survive and even thrive when we're facing awful times. Teach us today, we're asking, in your church. And all the church family at Wadham Lake said with one united voice, Before we dig in, here's my question. How can we, weak, prone to wander, sinful creatures that we are, how do we survive the hard, the painful, the overwhelming challenges that come all of our way? And you might not be in the middle of one of those seasons right now, but, but we all take time, we all seem to have our our share of trouble and pain and sorrow and difficulty, how do we deal with it when money is going out twice as fast as it's coming in? How do we deal with when the doctor says the diagnosis is Alzheimer's and you're the sole caregiver and you're just worn out? You don't feel like you can go another day. How do you endure multiple miscarriages and the desire of your heart's always been to have children and you've had multiple miscarriages and there's really not much hope in sight? How do we deal with a marriage that's in trouble and you know it's in trouble and your spouse knows it's in trouble but they're not willing to go and get help? How do we survive and endure a stubborn sin that refuses to die. You've tried to kill it again and again and again, and it just keeps coming back even stronger. How do we endure a rebellious child? And you know this child is headed for disaster, and no matter what you say, they still are hard and callous and don't want to do whatever it takes to get well. How do we deal with a boss that's unreasonable? How, how do you deal with a boss that you're pretty sure is out to get you? How do we deal when the doctor says it's cancer and the diagnosis is grim? Let's pay close attention to what Jesus does here. Track with me. Jesus models for us what we should do when we're facing crisis. I would argue Jesus was looking at the next events and they were the worst things that anyone in all of history would ever endure. And can I just tell you in advance, I'll tell you at the end, he does really well. He endures, he thrives. He doesn't just survive, he thrives. So what is it that Jesus does to face the worst pain, the worst agony in history and come out well. Verses 36 and 37, here we go. They arrive at the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus tells eight of the remaining 11 disciples, remember the 12th, Judas is already gone. He's going to go betray Jesus. He says, eight of you, just wait here at the entrance, have a seat, and he invites Peter, James, and John to come with him into the Garden of Gethsemane. And he says to them, in effect, let's go get fully prepared for the worst times, the worst events, the worst days of our lives. And again, please pay close attention. How did Jesus prepare? How did Jesus go about getting ready to have trials he knew were coming, beatings, uh, spikes 
in, in his hands and in his feet the sin of all mankind heaped upon him throughout all of history. Uh, he was going to be separated from the Father. Jesus knew all of that was coming his way. What did Jesus do to get prepared? Verse 39. Here we go. Going a little farther, Jesus fell with his face to the ground. He got, he, he got on his face and he prayed. And here was the essence of his prayer. My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus falls on his face in prayer. And he, he cries out the desire of his heart. Lord, if it's possible, if there's another way, please let's go, let's go that other route. But if it's not, give me the strength to deal with what's coming my way. Look at the next verse, verse 40. He says to his disciples, Peter, James, John, return to his disciples, found them what? Okay, four of you got it. The rest of you might be. Then he returned to his disciples and found them. If anybody's next to you sleeping, you got, you got my permission. Give them a little nudge, okay? Couldn't you keep, couldn't you men keep watch with me for how long? For one hour? Yeah. So it seems that Jesus' first step towards getting fully prepared was to go and cry out and be on his face before his heavenly father for one hour. Verse 42. Jesus, uh, once again, realizes he's not fully prepared yet. He went a second time, verse 42, and prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again, he's going to get alone intentionally and he's going to find rest and comfort and strength and power by being alone with the Father in prayer. And it seems that he's there for some time. I, I would say probably another hour. So he spends one hour, then he goes back and spends a second hour in prayer. Verse 43, and for the second time Jesus returns to Peter, James, and John, and what are they doing once again? They're sleeping. <laughs> Instead of getting prepared, they're too tired. They, they give in to sleep. Verse 44, so he left them and went away one more time, a third time, and prayed the third time, saying the same things. So again, uh, he spends an hour in prayer, likely another hour in prayer, and now he spends a third time in extended prayer, broken because he realizes he needs to stay on his face, stay on his knees until he's ready to face what's coming his way. He, he knew what's coming. So Jesus Christ, God with skin on, knew that trauma, agony, gruesomeness was coming his way. He got himself fully prepared. How? Give me your eyes. Three hours on his face, on his knees, in prayer. He, he knew that he needed his batteries, spiritual, mental, emotional batteries, fully recharged. He, he knew that he needed his tanks fully refilled, fully refilled with the Holy Spirit. He knew that he needed everything that only he could get from the Father and he spent three hours getting himself prepared. And the way that Jesus modeled what to do when facing a crisis, a disaster, a traumatic event, is for us. Do you understand that? He did it because he knew he needed to do it. And I, I know this, he withdrew often to have these sort of times. But he was going to be extra sure, I'm extra full, I've got everything I need, I'm fully prepared, and I'm now ready to face the worst events anyone's ever faced in all of history. Now, I want you to see what it was like with Jesus when he first entered the garden. And sometimes we get so 
focused on his deity, we minimize his humanity. He was fully human, just like us. And it records here, look at verse 37. When Jesus came into the garden, verse 37, filled with sorrow, and he was troubled. Verse 38, he was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He wasn't sure that he could even survive knowing what was coming his way. Verse 39, verse 42, he asks again and again, is there any other way? Father, is there any other alternative here? Uh, can you remove this cup of sorrow and wrath? And if you look at Luke chapter 22 and verse 43, he's so anguished, so overwhelmed, it says in Luke 22 that his sweat was filled with blood and drops of blood were falling to the ground. That's how upset, that, that's how much was going on inside of Jesus. But please notice, after being on his knees, after praying on his face for three hours, Jesus is now fully prepared for what's coming his way. He's ready. He's fully prepared. And after being on his face for three hours, uh, look at verse 46. He says, uh, wake up, boys. Uh, we're about to get betrayed. Rise. Let's go. Judas is coming right now. And here's what's fun. From this point on, Jesus is ready. Jesus is fully prepared and with determination and with grace and with wisdom and boldness and, and determination, he's ready to face what comes his way. What do you mean? Well, he's about to go before the Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, verses 57 to 67, chapter 26, and wow, is he strong. And then he goes before Pontius Pilate in chapter 27, verses 11 to 26. And again, wisdom, grace, strength, just the right words. And then uh, we're told in Luke 23, verses 8 to 11, he goes before Herod. And he knows exactly what to do as he stands before Herod. Jesus Christ, recharged, empowered, fully prepared to survive the worst day, the worst events that anybody's ever faced. What was his secret? You ready? How did he get fully prepared? How, how did he face those trials? How was he able to get ready for the beatings and the betrayal and the pain and the wrath poured out on him? Are you ready? Take your notes. Here it is. He intentionally withdrew to get on his face and get on his knees. He intentionally got away and he didn't get up until he was fully prepared to survive. More than that, he didn't get up till he was fully prepared to thrive whatever was coming his way. Intentionally withdrew. Intentionally got away and he wasn't going to get up until he was ready and fully prepared. So what should you and I learn from this here? What should we grab a hold of when we face trouble, when we face trials, terror, pain, overwhelmed? What does the world say? Run to the doctor. <laughs> you got troubles. Go. Run to a counselor. Get a good one. Run to the police. Run to your mom. Run to a bottle of Jack Daniels or a can of Budweiser. Run to Oprah. Run to Dr. Phil. Run to Dr. Oz. Run to Dr. Charles Stanley. Run to your pastor. Run to your best friend. What does God's word say? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. One of my favorite verses. Jim, you quoted it this morning in prayer. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we might receive mercy and find grace to help us when? In our times of need. So when we're in a bad time of need, what should we do? Intentionally run to the throne of grace and stay there till you're fully prepared and ready to face whatever's coming your way. Now, Peter, James, and John, remember the sleepy trio? 
he, he says, come with me. And they kept doing what? What, did, what were they doing again and again? Nap. Falling asleep. They were taking a, yeah, they were taking a power nap. Uh, I, would, I would argue they were taking an unempowered nap because how did they endure the events that were coming their way? Think about it right now. Can, can I tell you? They were denying, they were running, they were hiding, they were a mess. Why? You ready? They weren't prepared. Instead of getting prepared and making sure that they were full of the Spirit, batteries recharged, tanks refilled, instead of being prepared, uh, they were discouraged, depressed, hopeless, helpless. Uh, they were running away. They were no help. So when's the last time that you intentionally got on your face, got on your knees before the Lord your God? I, I, in my opinion, I don't think we do that much anymore. I, I don't think we think about, oh yeah, I need to intentionally withdraw and get alone and stay there until I'm fully prepared to face whatever's coming my way. That, that's like on the end of the list. And Jesus models for us, that should be up near the top. You understand? That, that should be the first thing. He shows us when crisis, when trouble, when distress, when we're confused, when we're angry, when we're upset, when we're betrayed, when we're lonely, get alone for an hour or two, or three with the Lord. Get on your face, get on your knees, and cry out to the Lord. Get fully prepared with Jesus so that you can survive what's coming your way or survive what's already landed at your doorstep and so that you can more than just survive so that we can thrive. And Jesus shows us very clearly the secret, come spend time with me. I model that. Come, come running to my throne and get recharged and refilled so that you can face whatever comes your way. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your book. It's wise. It teaches us. It instructs us. And you've taught us here this morning that whenever we face situations that are overwhelming and painful and frightening, you showed us what to do. So Lord, would you uh, teach us to be a fully prepared people? Lord, I pray that we wouldn't just do this when trouble comes, but Lord, might we get into the daily habit of getting on our face before you before trouble strikes before difficulty comes. Lord, would you teach us? Would you engrave on our hearts, uh, download on our brains, tattoo on our tongues that impulse to intentionally withdraw and get alone with you? And Lord, there very well may be some here today who are seeking. Could be some here today in your church they're interested in Jesus, they're interested in the cross, they're interested in the empty tomb, but they've never said, yes, Jesus, I believe you did that for me, and I receive you as my Savior and King. Never, never believed that, Jesus, you drank that cup of wrath for me. Never have drank the cup of salvation as the choice of my will. And I pray that even today, you give them faith and boldness to say yes to you today. And right where you're seated, did you know this? You can say yes, Jesus, I believe that you endured that agony even in the garden. You did that on my behalf. You modeled that for me. Jesus, you took my place on the cross as the sinless lamb of God. Jesus, I believe you shed your blood for my greatest problem. I'm a sinner. And Jesus, I believe you took my place in the grave. And early Sunday morning, you didn't stay dead. Jesus, I believe you arose from the dead for me. And as a choice of my will by faith, I receive you 
as my Savior, my Lord, my King. Work powerfully, Lord. Work powerfully. It's in Jesus' mighty and strong name we pray all these things. Thank you.